I think it's around 5 p.m. So hello from Geneva. I am here on a work trip. I'm actually visiting the Karan Dash factory tomorrow. So I just arrived today at around, I think that was like 2 p.m. Then I stayed a bit in the area, went to Starbucks nearby, and now I'm checked in my hotel. It's super chill and I'm so jet lagged. My mess is literally, well, it's there. But I'm planning to, I still have two hours till dinner time. So I might just go around the area and I will take you guys along. Good morning from Geneva. Today I'm going to tour the Karen Dash factory, so I'm quite excited for that. And I just want to say that I wore um, a local weave from the Philippines because gotta love your own country. And um, I really like the pattern on this. And I got the red one because Karen Dash is um, the primary color of their brand is red. So follow along today and we're gonna go geek out on a lot of pencils and art materials basically.
Hey guys, it's my last day here in Geneva. So before packing, I thought I'd share some of the stuff that I got from Karandash yesterday. We also got to visit the shop in the old town. So I also got a few pencils for myself. So let's start. So some of these were given during the workshop. So thank you so much Karandash for all the free things. I'm really excited to actually sit down and experiment with all of these. So the first one I got is this 849 pen. So the 849 pen is a signature, like a trademark pen of Karandash. So the shape is actually similar to a pencil. It's hexag hexagonal, hexagonal. And this one is in neon yellow. And I also have the rose gold one. So I really love the color as well. This was from Art Bar in the Philippines. So I have two. Next up, we got some really rare, rare pencils that are made with uh, Swiss wood, which I think is really interesting. Basically, it's a package that has pencils made of wood from Swiss forests. So I really love the, when you open it, it's like a, a well, a literal forest. Then you have a sharpener. You also have an eraser here and three different types of pencil. You can really smell the wood. And I think there's also another set of pencils that I got here. It's in collaboration with I don't know how to pronounce this. Missenzir? Missenzir? And then when I picked it up, I was like, it smells good. So apparently it's a collaboration with Missenzir. It's a perfume brand. So the pencils are delicately, del delicately perfumed by Missenzir. So it's very interesting. The scent is called Memoir de Colleur. I don't know how to speak French, guys. Selected by Karen Dash, which recalls childhood memories. So it's very interesting. It's one of those pencils where you don't want to use them for a really long time. But yeah, they are really pretty. Next up, I didn't know that Karen Dash actually carries gouache in tubes. So this was a shocker for me, but also a very good material that I like. This is a set of um, Karen Dash gouache studio in CMYK. So I have been using different kinds of gouache for the past couple of years. And I also have the studio gouache of Karen Dash, which is, um, it's a pan of 15 colors, but only the white one is the tubed one. So this is going to be interesting because I get to mix them, I get to paint with them. And I tried it out yesterday. The, the consistency was really good, so I'm really excited for this. And in line with that, we also were given a palette. I really love this palette because it's actually complementing to the new color too, which I'll explain later. So it's um, easy to clean. Uh, as you can see, I already made a mess out of it yesterday. So this one is a really good palette for um, watercolors like the gouache and also this one, the Neo Color 2, which I'm excited to finally have. This Neo Color 2 are, they look like crayons, but they're actually water-soluble um, pens. 
wax pastel, sorry. So it's waxy, but what I like about it is the pigment is really strong. So this is what it looks like. It's basically all the colors, but when you go to the store, you'll actually see a lot more neo color colors. So if you like metallics, you like very faded colors, they have everything for you. So this is what it looks like. It definitely looks just like a crayon, but this one, when you put it on the palette and then you wet it with a water brush, it instantly um, automatically makes the pigment really watery and water soluble and really strong. So it's easy to paint around. So definitely gonna try working with gradient lettering for this because I wanted to try something else apart from using paint. So I think this is a good um, alternative to that. And next up for the color pencil line would be the Super Color Soft. This is a set of 12 in the regular colors, but I actually bought a set. If you've watched my Germany haul, I actually bought a set of Super Colors from Munich and I got really specific colors, which I'll also show you later for comparison. But these are the basic colors. These are also water soluble, meaning they're technically watercolor pencils, which is always good because I like using them for my urban sketches and travel illustrations. And let me see if I can, yeah. So I have also this set of graphite um, and pencils. So I will definitely use them for black and white illustrations and really work on graphites and the values so i really liked it yesterday we had this activity where we did a lot of smudging with the 9b graphite and i really like it and can just say look at the tin it's really pretty it's so much of a collector's item i actually got another one <laughs> so i could store my uh, pablo this is my set of super color soft for your reference so the colors are very muted and i really chose these colors because they're good for my landscape uh, landscape illustrations and I really wanted to highlight the different colors that they have. Apparently, I've heard that they have like 120, which is really, really cool and really interesting because, you know, it's nice to have all the basic colors, but sometimes you just want specific colors, especially if you're an illustrator with a very definite palette. This is really a great idea and great product to invest in. All of my colored pencils at home are actually water soluble, so I really wanted to test uh, the difference between a water-soluble pencil and actually a very permanent pigmented pencil that is not water-soluble. So I was thinking of getting a Pablo or Luminance yesterday, but I asked Annalise, she's really good with colored pencil illustration, and she suggested that I get the Pablo instead. So this is the Pablo. I got the individual colors. Of course, I got a tin can as well. So that I don't like it when it's like in a pencil case and it's all just like there. I'm just really OC with that. So let me show you my very um, different palette. So I got these colors. Now when you look at it on camera, it looks actually like just the regular like you have warm tones, warm tones, cool tones, neutrals, brights. But I really chose specific colors because I'm thinking of using this actually for lettering. And I've been using a lot of watercolor for lettering, so I was thinking if I used permanent color pencil, I think the effect would be really great. And I've been told that the layering of this is really good because it layers on top of it. It's not like it mixes with the colors, so I'm really interested to try it out. And yeah, basically that's my haul. I'm going to show you some of the work that I did yesterday at the workshop, but you've probably seen some of the clips already. So these are the some of the stuff that we did yesterday. This is this paper is actually a sample of the pen test. I was like, ooh, I like that pattern. Would you believe these are actually from pens that have been like, you know, tested all over like that, just so they could see the consistency of ink. I also did some landscapes from earlier... And here are some of the, I like this one, it's actually like a mountain range, it reminds me of China for some reason. This one is an abstract work. I like it when it's framed like this, but if you can see from here, it's actually gouache that we use the washout technique, so it's really interesting. Uh, Pete told us how to use these colors in a very dynamic way and using these techniques in order to create a lot of patterns. Okay, this was the scratch out technique which uses the uh, water soluble this make things part is water soluble so this this pink one that's on top of it is actually a permanent one and then you dab it with water and then you wipe it out and you get to see this i really like learning about these techniques because this is these are things that i never really learned at home 
And this one is like a gradient technique which we use the neo colors with. So these are just some flowers I drew on. And this is also a similar technique which reminded me of like retro vintage style patterns, especially with this color scheme. Uh, this one is like a printmaking technique. It's very interesting because we use the cutter and a plastic, clear plastic sheet in order to achieve this with the neo color too. This one is like a smudge technique. This is one of the first ones we tried. This is actually where you'll see that the pigmentation of the watercolor pencils are really, really, really strong because just one spray and the color starts to spread. This one is a sandpaper technique, which I don't think I did really well, but, you know, just keeping it here for reference. I did some letters as well. 